G'day, how are you going? And today we're looking at the simple concept of dip slip folding system. So this is a folding system, it occurs in rock. Obviously it's why you clicked on the video. And here we have the basic mechanisms of this type of folding system. So what we have here is the actual movement of the fold in itself so what we have here we have different structures so here we have laminations so the laminations are offset and with a normal fold you would have movement on the foot wall side uh, with the hanging wall moving downwards so it's basically how it goes you just draw a little mine shaft and the foot wall is where you walk on basically so the normal fault is because of a spreading center so obviously these two are moving in opposite directions and the angle is about roughly 60 degrees it can be a different type of angle so it is a steep angle because it's a lot easier based on physics for the rock to actually be pulled apart. A reverse fault is where the two sides are coming together. So they're being pushed together, really squeezed together by a convergent plate boundary. And the angle is usually 30 degrees. So if you look at a compass, look at a compass, you got zero, you got 90, 180 so we're looking at the angle going downwards so here I have 30 so that's basically the angle and this is about 60 so the reason why it's not 60 degrees is because it is a steep angle it will require a lot more energy to actually push those plates over top of each other when it is the angle is a lot lower Okay, so 30, it's a lot easier for the rock to slide over top. So that's why this angle is generally a lot, uh, a lot shallower. So let's have a look. And in the reverse fault, I just have these two laminated areas. So this might be an unconformity uh, or non-conformity, whatever you type of uh, conformity you want uh, this is just a lamination let's just say that's mudstone the rest is sandstone and the offset indicates where the movement has occurred so obviously on the right side it's moved up so that's the hanging wall because of the angle of the actual fracture and the left side is the foot wall and that's moved down so in these two cases, it doesn't mean that both of these sides have moved down. It just means that one side has moved relative to another. So it could be that this side is not moving at all. And it's just this side's been pushed on top of uh, the uh, foot wall. Same with this one. It might be that one side is stable. And it, maybe the other side is getting stretched by a baffle lift or something like that. So, I don't know, maybe this side is not moving and one side is getting pushed up as probably as the baffle lift is coming up, pushing it up, so pushing the rock up. It's also mounting the bottom as well. And that would indicate that you now one side is moving. But, you know, sometimes you can have both sides that are moving in that direction. So, and you also got lateral obtuse movement as well so not only up and down but also north south east or west so sometimes in massive rocks we have no lamination so massive rock just means uh, you've got like hundreds of meters of rock it doesn't show any lamination so you don't see any of the layering and of course in this rock, we're talking just about sedimentary rock. 
So these can occur in uh, igneous rock as well as metamorphic rock. And it can show lamination as well. But, you know, this massive, if you've got a, oh, what is that permanent? Permanent marker, yay. Good thing never read about that. Anyway, so, oh, what was I going to say? Yeah, so in the massive rock, even though that there is movement, both sides, uh, you're not too sure which side has moved up and which side has moved down. So it's a bit hard to interpret the actual rock fracture. So in this graph here, we have the earliest rock fracture, which is the uh, red. And then that's been cut by the blue fracture and the black fracture has been the last one. So that's how you can interpret uh, rocks that have uh, different types of cross-cutting, you know, uh, fault systems that occurred at different time periods. And here's just the actual graph of uh, a compass. You can look up how to interpret a compass on the internet. And Sally was here. So I hope this helps you with uh, normal and reverse faults. Pretty simple concept. And uh, let me know if I've missed out anything so I can clear things up. Anyway, thank you very much and have an awesome geological time. Thank you. Bye-bye.